I thought he was going to take his own life. Um, there was a few scary moments that we went through then when the Twin Towers were bombed, the 9-11 stuff. That was the biggest trigger and that was the beginning of his spiral um, down. It was hard to get help. When Andrew couldn't go to work, nobody wanted to come near us. No one visited him in hospital. Um, we had one person from Defence that visited him, one, one of his friends. The rest, nobody came near us. We were, I was struggling with two children not knowing what to go on. No one came near us. Our friends departed. Um, our children's friends were not allowed to play. I don't know whether they thought that Andrew might be contagious, but um, they weren't allowed to come here for some reason. So how did that make you feel? I felt like a leper. I felt that my husband had done nothing wrong. He, he was the one that was always there for someone. And then all of a sudden, we had nobody. I was told horror stories about how my kids would end up. I had visions of my children spray painting trains, um, being um, social parasites, you know, like because this is, you know, this was the images that I were being given for, for when PTSD affects your family, that, that, that it would affect my children that way. So determined that that wasn't going to happen, I started investigating more and started doing more, finding out more about it, finding out about where we would be able to go for help um, because we knew nothing, knew nothing about Veterans Affairs or anything at this time. We became very close, a very close-knit family. Um, so that could be seen as a nice thing uh, at the moment. Um, I know my daughters um, have the most respect for their father and, and they, they have so much love and respect for him and for what he's been through. We've never hidden it from them. Um, they know what I've been through. It's been hard because you lose your friends, so sometimes you dump on your kids and that's the hardest thing because they've got to live with your issues as well. Um, so, so um, that's one of the hardest things is that they don't only have the issues from their dad that they're dealing with, you've got no one else to talk to. So all of a sudden you're dumping on a 12 or an 8 year old and it must be so hard for them but you've got nowhere else to go because no one talks to you. So hopefully that will change and hopefully by changing the face of mental health and by encouraging people to learn about it and not be so um, not be so stubborn and to get rid of the stigma, then these sorts of things won't happen and these children of the future, you know, won't be so affected. Found some help, then I started helping others. So as a way of helping myself was helping other veterans. It makes it easier um, for them to go and ask those questions, ask the hard questions and you know it's not such a scary thing to ask are you going to kill yourself because if you don't realise how, how important that question can be. So if we're giving people confidence to say that or are you feeling suicidal, you've started the conversation and when people are confident about that then um, you know, you're going to have a, a lot better outcome. So the feedback we're getting, um, I get a lot of good feedback because I'm a little bit animated and I'm very passionate about it. So that often comes back and uh, I also work from a lot of experience having lived with a partner that's um, depressed. Um, I've had to go through the depression, the anxiety. I know what that's like. I've suffered depression, um, as many partners do. Um, I also pick up on some of the PTSD traits. Um, I struggle with anxiety sometimes. It's good because I can then give a lived experience in 
in my courses that I run. Um, I volunteer my time to run the courses. We don't, char- as I said, we don't charge for any of that. Um, and the feedback is great. So we're educating the community to understand not only our veterans and first responders, but actually understand their own families because one in four people suffer with a mental health illness. In 2013, we launched Operation PTSD Support, which cares for the partners and carers of the veterans. So it's supporting those that support. In 2014, we expanded that to look after the first responders, um, so the fire, the police and ambulance. So we wanted to look after their families as well. So we don't look after the actual sufferer of PTSD, but we look after the ones that care because I believe that if you look after those people, they can then make a better effort at looking after the veteran. So the more chance of the family staying together. We also take ladies away for respite and that's been a a godsend to many. When you find the group and find and Donna, they give you so much information and these weekends away, they just, it gets you away from all the stress. Even though everyone else is dealing with the same stress, you can leave it behind and everyone has a good laugh, everyone relaxes and you go back refreshed. I love to come along and get involved with these ladies. I get to laugh, I get to forget about day to day life and just have fun and be my crazy self and everybody accepts me. Just spending two days up here at the retreat that Donna organises. It's so relaxing and it's time away from everyday problems. So it's really good fun. When Andrew first was diagnosed, there was no support for families at all. There was nothing there. Thankfully, um, over time, that's improved. Um, I'm also thankful that my children didn't end up like I thought uh, and they didn't end up spray painting trains to my knowledge Um, both of them were helped through the veterans children education scheme and I helped through school and university so both my children have have gone on and uh, done things for themselves Uh, and whilst the PTSD will always had an impact on them um, seeing a dad try to suicide or seeing um, the mood swings and living with the depression has to impact on everybody within the family. Luckily, they were able to access some um, help through that. Um, I can't understand why for the child of a Vietnam veteran, that uh, availability of services is there for life. But for the child of other veterans, there's, there's, it, it stops, it is, there's a cutoff age. So myself, as a child of a Vietnam veteran, has full access to these services for life. My father didn't have PTSD. But my children who lived with this uh, don't have the same access. So that's something, that's the one thing that really needs to be changed, to have something fairer for all veterans so that these veterans that are currently serving overseas feel confident that their family will be looked after.